What's that? It's me knocking it out of the park figuratively in this video by providing you, the viewer, so much value. I'm talking about my TIG welding machine and all the little components and accessories and things that go with it so that I can lay down, hopefully, beautiful welding beads. So let me tell you about what I think about all this stuff. This is the, the welding machine that I have. I got this in 2014. Everlast doesn't make this machine anymore as far as I understand. Uh, I paid $700 for this, which I think is a really good deal. It was brand new. And what I had them do when I ordered it was I said, give me the upgraded foot pedal and free shipping. And in exchange, don't send me the torch. I talked to some sales guy and he said, sure. And he made me that deal. So for $700, I got it. It was, it was I thought it was a great deal. This is a DC welding machine. Machine. I cannot weld aluminum, uh, but I can weld steel and titanium and stainless and some other stuff. So I figured uh, I didn't plan on making aluminum bikes. I figured aluminum welding might be useful sometimes, but it was not a priority for me. This has uh, pulse settings, which I think is really useful if you're making bikes. I wouldn't want to buy a, uh, a welder without pulse settings. It also has high frequency start, which you need, and it has the, uh, the gas solenoid in there so that you plug your argon into the machine and then it flows through the, the, you know, the cable and you don't need a valve on your torch body. Uh, you have pre-flow and post-flow settings and amperage control and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's a pretty basic machine, but it has high frequency start, it has the gas control, and it has pulsing, and it's 200 amps, and I have a torch that's not even rated for that much. The amperage is not really a concern when you're talking about welding thin wall bike tubing. Now, if you needed to also do other side projects and stuff, then you know this, this video is directed specifically about bike frame building. So I have this cart for the welder, and you wouldn't need a cart depending on your setup, but uh, for me in my shop, I don't have a designated welding area at the time, the time being, so it's nice to have a cart. I can just roll it around, and then it's got the different drawers and stuff. I got uh, different you know, cups for shielding gas, and a brush, and uh, electrodes, collets, different kinds of gloves here, all the, all the associated welding stuff just right here where you need it. This uh, is like a little garage bay for your, uh, your welding hood and that keeps it from getting all you know dusty all the time and uh, you know just you know, all, all that associated stuff fits right in there so you're not making a mess which is great I have on the back here is my straight argon tank this is I believe 80 cubic feet it is small I would like to have a bigger bottle of argon gas for welding however uh, my local air gas supplier will not let me buy a larger uh, bottle I would need to rent it which is not a big deal but uh, I wanted to own it for whatever reason when I got started so I bought this and I own this tank and when I go to refill it I'm actually just swapping this physical tank out for a different physical tank that's already filled but I own the tank that's how I do it there and um, so I'd like to have a larger bottle and if I get uh, steadily welding again I will I will start renting one or I'll find a place that'll sell me one then I have a T that comes off of there. This is not how the bottle usually is. It came with this regulator. This came with my welder and uh, it controls the flow of argon uh, with this little, um, you know, uh, regulator. And then I have a T here, so I also have a separate one, and this is for back purge. So maybe I'll cover this in another video someday, all the different fittings and stuff, because it's, you know, I had to learn and study about that and figure out what the hell I was even buying so that I could plug into things to back for purge the inside of the frame for welding uh, so that, you know, you don't have atmosphere inside of your frame, which is not necessary for steel always, but it's not a bad idea. It's definitely uh, necessary for titanium. You have to get all the atmosphere out of the inside of a titanium frame and so that's uh, why you would need this sort of uh, hose and a second argon source. So I do them off of the same bottle with a T. I don't remember the, the names of the fittings. I think I went to like the CyberWeld website or something and I couldn't find it and so I called them up and they helped me figure out what I needed. That seems to be what I remember doing. It was a couple years ago. So now walking over to, this is, this is my makeshift welding area. When I got this CNC machine in here, I had to get rid of some stuff to create space and I got rid of my awesome welding table. And so uh, I have this sort of truncated welding table now and uh, it's not ideal. I would like to be able to stick my knees under it and I can't, so I'm kind of hunched over more. It's fine, it's not ideal. Uh, this is my torch. It's a CK Worldwide, um, 
CK130RG. So I think that means it's a rigid head. It's not a flex head and it's uh, rated to like 130 amps. This was, I don't remember how much money. It's a, it's an awesome torch. This is rated to like 120 or 130 amps, uh, which is more than enough for making bikes with. And, um, and then I've replaced some of the, uh, the stock stuff that it came with, or maybe I, I don't remember if I bought this from the beginning. This year is what's called the gas lens, right? These are pretty popular these days. It's just like a, it's like a faucet aerator basically. So it allows the gas that's coming out of here to be, uh, more of a laminar flow, more of a smooth flow rather than a turbulent kind of flow. And that helps shield your, your workpiece better. And then, of course, you need the right collet for your tungsten electrode. This is, what, a... Uh, um eighth inch <laughs> i haven't thought about it in a long time it's a 330 seconds electrode okay so anyway uh that's what i use you need the right collet i use full length electrodes as you grind them down they get a little bit shorter uh when i was getting started somebody somebody suggested oh get you know the stubby the stubby back cap and then use shorter electrodes you know break your electrodes in half and then grind them so you have short stubby ones which is useful in some welding applications in a tight spot certainly when you're welding the rear end of a bike there are some very tight spots and uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could make that easier on yourself with a smaller torch well I have found I, I didn't even figure it out actually I think I went to a weld seminar with Brad Bingham God's gift to TIG welding and um, he, he was mentioning uh, <laughs> he was mentioning that uh, there's no place on the bike frame that you can't get a full-length back cap uh, just in the bike bike welding application there generally isn't a spot where this actually gets in the way so if you're welding inside of a pipe or something uh, a lot of other applications you run into that in the bike frame you generally don't run into issues with this bumping into stuff. And so I took his advice and I kind of like it. I, I don't find that it gets in the way. And um, you know, it's all about, welding is all about what you're used to and you can get used to just about anything. Um, but I haven't found it to be an issue to run a full length back cap. And then it allows you to get a lot more life out of your tungsten because instead of throwing it away when it gets down to like two inches or whatever it is, uh, you know, you can use the, the one stick most of the way up. If you break it in half, then your remainders actually comprise a fair amount of the, the total length that you started with. So I like to use a full length back cap uh, on a torch like this. I have no complaints with this. And then you get the super flex cable for it. This one is 25 feet. And I think that's a good length. If you had the 12 footer or whatever the, the shorter length is, uh, you would find that you don't actually you know, your welder doesn't need to be 12 feet away, but if your welder is like seven feet away, you still might want about 12 feet of lead. And sometimes you need to reach a little bit further in the shop or whatever. So it's nice to have a little bit extra. My ground cable, I think is only about 12 feet and that's almost long enough, but occasionally it's a pain in the butt that it's not any longer. I have one of these. This was about $8 from one of those weld supply stores. And uh, you just kind of hook your torch on there. Really super valuable to have if you weld at a bench because uh, you know you can move it wherever you want in a hurry and then it holds your torch. So if you need to you know, do anything, reposition stuff, whatever, you don't need to worry about uh, you know, damaging your tungsten or chipping your, your cup, especially if you, have, if you have a nice glass cup. Um, or, you know, this will poke you real good if it, if it swings around and whacks you in the thigh. That's no fun. Um, so just having a nice place to hook it is good. I forgot to say, I usually use a number eight cup for uh, steel bike frame welding. And occasionally in the rear end of the bike uh, where I'm trying to get into a real tight spot like seat stays, I've tried using a smaller cup, but generally I don't think that's even that helpful to switch cups. So I usually do everything with a number eight, uh, you know, alumina cup. On the welding area, I like to keep these different various aluminum blocks. They wouldn't need to be aluminum. You could use different things, but uh, I have a bunch of these around from like machining and stuff. So these are good because, uh, you know, this has a couple different heights and so I can prop my wrist on it or I can prop the frame or the work or whatever against these. It allows me sort of comfortable access. I keep these around because they're real good for snipping the ends of the the uh, the filler rod. So if I if I'm welding and I stop and now the end of this is sort of uh, oxidized or there's a little BB on the end, I can just kind of trim it off and I have a nice fresh end. Uh, I like to use cotton gloves. So uh, this the black ones are a little bit thicker and the yellow ones are a little bit thinner. The torch gets a little bit hot when you're steadily welding and so I like to use the thicker black gloves on my right hand and uh, you know these are 
ambidextrous gloves. You can use them on either side. So I, I get a couple black pairs and those are always my right hand gloves for the torch. And then I get these yellow ones that are a little bit thinner and I use these on the filler hand where I feel like I need a little more dexterity. In fact, uh, sometimes I just weld without a glove on that hand because I tend to not feel like I'm risking burning myself. Uh, the glove is not a bad idea, certainly. Uh, and then I have this TIG finger, you know, Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks uh, markets and sells these. It's, it's really useful sometimes. You can see the heat marks from uh, different times where it, it saved me from getting burned, being able to sort of perch on something that's very hot. You don't have to wait for stuff to cool down all the time. You can just keep going and uh, really super useful. And I, I just, I get used to it. It's like a comfort zone thing to have this, you know, my two fingers kind of tucked in here and then I can perch my, my torch hand on something. I like to have my little rack of electrodes. I, I got this from Adam Sklar or somebody. I remember seeing a picture. Somebody else did something like this. But, you know, it's a it's a five-minute or less tool, uh, probably less than that. But, you know, just a chunk of two-by-four, and I drilled half-inch holes in it most of the way through and then and I labeled them. And so as I follow the tungsten electrodes, I just transfer them over. And uh, I, used to, I used to have a different system that was fine, but this is way easier. And I, it really makes my life and my welding a lot nicer to have that. This is my welding hood. I like a passive hood. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, being into fixed gear bikes, right? It's just, it's simpler and it's sleeker. And the amount of money that you put into a passive hood, you get a lot of value out of that. So if you want to buy a nice auto darkening hood, like a speed glass or something, what are those, like 300 bucks, 500 bucks? They're not cheap and uh, I'm sure they're very nice. Uh, I've heard people say that these provide better visual acuity and clarity than even the nicest auto darkening hoods. I don't know if that's true, but they're certainly good enough for me. You have a nice large viewing window, and when you get used to them, uh, I really don't think there's anything wrong with them at all. I think they, they work quite nicely. You know, you get your hands in position to strike the arc, you flip the hood down, and then you, you initiate your arc, and within like the first, you know, half a second of the arc being initiated, if you're a little bit off your mark or if your filler is not where it needs to be, now you can see and you move into position. And uh, when you're used to these, they, they work fine. This one is lightweight enough. What I would like to do is get the, the replacement. This is like a Huntsman 951P. This is what I could find when I was hood shopping. But if you get one that's like a lightweight canvas, um, it, I think they make them that are even lighter weight, which would be nice because there's a little bit of neck strain associated with any hood and the nicer ones are generally lighter weight. So, uh, you know, this isn't bad, but if I was welding bike frames all day, I think it would, it would strain my neck eventually. Something I forgot to mention when we originally recorded this is that I use a specific lens in my hood. It's called a gold shade lens. It's like a two-way mirror that lets some of the light come in, but not all of it. It reflects out some of the light. It's different than the green plastic lens that comes in most passive hoods. I use a number 10 gold shade, and the reason that I do that and that a lot of other frame builders and TIG welders use these is that uh, it gives you a sharper and clearer visual acuity of the puddle. I don't even have any of the other protective glass plates or anything in my hood. It's just the gold shade and that's it. They cost about $10. Try that out if you're gonna go the passive hood route. And the coolest thing is that it makes you look like an astronaut. Who doesn't wanna look like a spaceman? Now, as far as filler rod is concerned, for welding steel bikes, I usually have used Weld Mold 880T filler rod. And so uh, I've heard that it's similar in alloy, I think, to 312 uh, stainless filler rod. And uh, it's real popular among bike frame builders. I'm not a med metallurgist or a you know weld engineer. I don't know all the specifics, but uh, it certainly does the job for a lot of people. And um, and so you know I feel like it's it works for me. It it's smooth. You know it kind of wets out nicely. And it's definitely it's just what I'm used to. So like. The thing that, that I see time and time again, and you hear from welders, a lot of people seem to think this is true, that like what works for me doesn't necessarily work for someone else, and what you think is not even possible for yourself, someone else is real good with that method. And so welding seems to be not always so much about right and wrong, but about what you can get used to and what you can make work for yourself. And so, uh, you know, because this is what I usually use and I've gotten used to it, I stick to it more or less. And if I was gonna switch to something new, I wouldn't just just throw it into the mix, I would do a bunch of practice welds with it and get to know it first before I just, you know, jumped right in to welding it into a finished bike frame. Uh, but it's it's stainless so you can bond uh, like, you know, a stainless dropout to a, to a steel tube and I think if you were using ER70 rod, um, 
you maybe wouldn't want to weld like stainless dropouts with the, I don't really know. I'm, I'm not the expert on that sort of stuff. I've also heard people say that when you're using a stainless filler rod, it makes the back purge on the inside of the frame a little bit more important. So um, something to, some to consider for, uh, for folks who are thinking about stainless rod. I'm not the expert on this and I'm not claiming to do be, but uh, that's sort of what works for me. Now, uh, a couple years ago, um, I made these knockoffs. I actually have one of these heat sinks that I bought from Jeff at Sputnik Tool and I really like it and uh, you know I'm just cheap and uh, I like making my own stuff and so at the time it seemed like a good use of my time to make a bunch of these heat sinks. Now this is a blatant ripoff of Jeff's design. I don't make and sell these. I wouldn't sell these to anyone else but it was good practice for me in the machine shop to just make a whole bunch of these. So I made like 10 or 15 of these in all different sizes and uh, you know you can buy these from Jeff, they're great. So you just uh, you slide this inside of a tube, and then as you tighten these nuts away from each other, it drives the the brass or the bronze part up some wedges, so you get nice tight contact on the inside of. Um, I'll just show you. you. Slide it in here, and then when you tighten these nuts against each other, it expands the heat sink, and now you get good contact. And uh, this is really uh, the volumetric heat capacity of brass and bronze and copper is very good. It pulls a lot of heat out. So as you're welding thin wall stuff, right, you can uh, you can dump some of that extra heat into this so your tubes are less likely to warp. You don't get as much like um, the, the inside of the tube is smoother and it gives you more control because the total heat input is a little bit uh, like the, the total heat that, you know, the, the amperage that's coming out of your torch is a little bit higher. It gives you a little bit larger window. Uh, it, it feels like there's, it feels like you're welding heavier material. It's not so fickle and sensitive to just a little bit too much or a little bit too little amperage. It seems like it's a little more stable and it's easier to weld. And so a lot of people use heat sinks like these. And these are, for all intents and purposes, the Sputnik design. And then, uh, and then on the end of it here, it's got a pipe thread and you put on the, uh, the compressed air fitting, which is what I used as a delivery method for our on, not through a compressed air system in the shop, but uh, that's just the fittings that I used. So I could plug into this and then now I could let a little bit of argon in through the inside of the frame where I'm also uh, absorbing the latent heat from the weld with these. Uh, and so when I'm doing a practice weld, I'll just put this inside and then I'm practicing in a similar way to when I'm actually welding the frame. Did I hit that home run? I hope the video is valuable for y'all. Uh, I'm going to do more welding related videos and uh, you know I, I, when I was getting started there was little bits and pieces of welding information here and there but nobody compiled it into a you know 15 minute video that I could just sit down and watch and get a lot of perspective about what is valuable and what are the most important parts of the, the kit and so this is one person's experience with buying a welder getting set up and what I like to use and uh, if you take this as a starting point and then you add in all the other little tidbits of information you hear from different people I think you'll get uh, you know a pretty decent sense of what direction you should go when you're buying you know your first welder or when you're buying you know your first welding hood or you know a new torch for your welder that sort of thing and uh, and we'll just have more more uh, videos coming out about some more specifics related to welding in the shop so uh, yeah if you appreciate the videos consider buying a, a hat or a bottle opener or something for my web store I super appreciate that sort of thing helps me prioritize making the videos and uh, they're like 20 bucks each and uh, regardless uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon